Ballads have the best picture quality money can buy, the spiritual successor to our beloved plasmas of old. However, changes in the TV industry that aren't going to happen, but have already happened, are putting that amazing technology in danger. Mini LED is back in a massive way. Almost every major TV manufacturer is investing their time and their resources in ultra large mini LEDs, entry level, mid-level and high-end, ultra bright, large, affordable, all the options are covered. Will this spell the end of OLED? Will it follow and have the same fate as our beloved plasma? We discuss up next. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Brian. This is Tech Therapy. I'm here with my buddy, partner in crime. Stop the FOMO. FOMO, what's happening? Hey man, feeling good. Feeling good. I know we, we just saw each other a few days ago. We can't really disclose where we were, but that meeting, what we saw, or I should say kind of what we saw, but also some of the numbers that were thrown at us from oh. the industry insiders. Shocking. Um, really made me want to do this video. And a video is either titled The Rise of Mini LED, The Fall of OLED. Um, and the perception that OLEDs were mainstream mm -hmm. and the perception that they were taking over. We thought this year it would be OLEDs nonstop, QD OLED, MLA. Mm -hmm. And we saw the rise of these massive TVs that we thought no one would want, yet here we are. Share with me a little bit uh, the numbers we heard, and I wanna get into this conversation with you now. Okay, and you know, without naming names, what surprised me was the sudden shift in priorities in terms of size. They told me that, because I was saying, hey, I'm noticing you're having these larger sizes, you know, what, what's, what's up with that? They're like, well, it is what it is. Industry sales show that globally, the or maybe just the usa the sale of 98 inch tvs and larger so 98 100 increased by 10 times we got to chase that trend we can't be left behind and hearing that maybe go wait what does that mean for your the rest of your lineup <laughs> because yeah exactly if you're chasing that you know the, the consumer has a certain price point and obviously we're not going to share prices at this time but it's not cheap oleds are not cheap if you're chasing this size that's an lcd slash mini led where does that leave the oled in your lineup i mean cannibalization what so yeah well, there and there is a distinct irony, and I know all of you guys that have followed audiovisual or home entertainment for years. OLEDs were never bright enough. Burn-in was always a fear, but more importantly, FOMO, they were too small, they weren't bright enough, mm -hmm. and they were too expensive. Mm -hmm. Now, LEDs, inferior LEDs, were still popular. They were bigger, they were cheaper, and they were brighter. Now, mm -hmm. LEDs are bigger, they are cheaper, and they are brighter. And even though <laughs> OLEDs <laughs> <laughs> so even though OLEDs are now 83 inches, um, and I can illustrate this in all of our live streams between our both channels, we've done several live streams about the G4, S95D, and everyone's like, that is fascinating. So tell me about this 100-inch whatever it is. Okay. And so you I, think I'm, that started gonna... with the... When did you think that really started? Because I got all kinds of... Uh, um, uh, go ahead. No, I have to tell you, when you said you know, bigger, brighter... There was a certain point, and I remember that point, which was when Samsung introduced the QN900 or the Q900TS, right? The 8K. Yep. Mm -hmm. That was maybe 2020. And I thought, okay. When you gave your mom. No, no. I gave my mom the following, the 900 The 950. <laughs> the 900B. <laughs> this was the, the first, the, the first yeah. 8K that was supposed to be their flagship line. I think this was maybe 2020. Uh -huh. And I was like, this is the end of LCD TVs because that was when they introduced the Q90T. I was so deeply disappointed. Yeah. Right when I saw that their flagship 4K was the 90T with severely limited dimming zones and processing. I'm like, wait, you went from the Q90R to the Q90T? Clearly yeah. the 900T. Yeah, I remember the focus, that. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's when I announced, okay, it's the end of LCD TVs because Samsung is trying to pass this TV off with less dimming zones than ever. And yeah. that was the same year that 
was it TCL was introducing their first mini LED TV. So where Samsung was going, sat, it was the eight series, right? So where Samsung oh, yeah, yeah, walked yeah, yeah. away from LCD, TCL introduced the, the eight series. And I thought, okay, this doesn't make any sense. And, and I announced, you know what, if this keeps up, it's the end. And then Sony continued to struggle with their 900 at the time, I think it was a 900 H fiasco. Right. Yeah, and so H, I was thinking, yeah. yeah, this, this does not a good look for LCD in general. Mm -hmm. But then things started picking up. Samsung appeared the next year with the Mini LED QN 95A, 90A, yep. then the 90B, and this, and then the 90C last year, and then this year the 90D. Um, Sony continues to improve their LCD TV, which surprises me. Thank you, Sony, for doing that. X90L, okay. great, X95. great TV. Yep. And then Hisense and T-Cell didn't stop. I thought the six series from TCL would be the pinnacle, meaning they're focused oh, yeah. on value. They'll stay at the seven hundred dollar range, and they just improve that. They start going to a thousand dollars, then twelve hundred. Next thing I know, there's a two thousand dollar eighty five inch QM eight last year, which rivals similarly priced Samsung TVs. And so, where we are today. So let's fast forward to today. Hisense and TCL have pushed performance to match sometimes exceeding Samsung's best TVs. Now, they're not perfect, but there are certain they're winning in some of the the features and specs that normally is reserved for the best because we're talking hardware specs that are yeah. very difficult to get without the right dimming zone count and mini LED. They got the good blacks, they got better contrast. I'm so impressed and now they're applying this improvement to their LCD TVs. 98 inch size, 100 inch size. These aren't just throwaway TVs. Like we consider the T-Cell 4 series, eh, this is a TV you put in your Airbnb. Yeah. No, right? no, you don't no care for dimming. Bricks. Yeah, it's big. So when they released that $2,000 S5 last year, and then we got a close look at it, I'm like, wait, <laughs> this isn't a throwaway $2,000 98 inch. No. This is a TV that I would recommend to my friends and family, our viewers, and, and feel very comfortable. And I went back to Best Buy to look at the reviews, right? So now about 100 people has got the S5 and about 75 people have got the U76N. Both of these star ratings are 4.7, 4.8. That is very high. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, when you're paying that much, $2,000 is not cheap. The consumer is picky, right? They'll complain if your delivery guy has BO, they'll give you one star. So it's just, <laughs> yeah, they messed up my rug. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he left fingerprints yeah. everywhere. And yeah. so I'm looking at that. I'm like, okay, not only is this a highly rated TV, it's a $2,000 from TCL or Hisense. It's yeah. 98 inch, it's 100 inch. And I have to take a step back and say, okay, isn't this $2,000 budget where OLED is supposed to dominate? And I was hoping for a 77 inch OLED at that price by this time. Mm -hmm. We're struggling to get to that price point. At the $2,000 mark, we're still at the 65 yeah. inch. I mean, look at the launch prices of the C4. I'm like, man, I mean, this sets up 2024. This is the year yeah. I think that mini LED, and, and we could even include LCD TVs that are not mini LED. This is the year that they actually <laughs> may make a comeback and rival the superior technology. And you and I agree both for our personal TV, it would be an OLED, but that takes us to what you and I talk about all the time. Is it good enough? Is LCD TV, mini LED TV yeah. today good enough? So, and to your point, I think if we go back even a little farther, FOMO, when we were all chasing 3,000 nits for LEDs, the Z9G, <laughs> oh, right? The, the we Vizio chasing, P Quantum X. Yeah, the, the Quantum X. <laughs> and we kind of saw that even though the brightness was there, it wasn't useful brightness. It didn't right. matter in content. So then we came right. to this conclusion, all of us as an industry, that at a thousand nits, a lot of what we watch is where it, it caps out. And then it became the micro contrast of OLEDs. And OLEDs are superior. There's there really not much debate in that regard. And I love um, LEDs. And right. I've always been pushing for them. But even last year, or let me go back a little farther. When they released the X92 for Sony, that was a 98 inch or 100 inch. The Samsung Q190A, there was a, a flagship Samsung huge mm -hmm. a sony the amount of criticism a couple of years ago for those companies releasing 4k tvs that size everyone raised their hand wait a second i thought this is what ak was for 
We were told that's what it was for. And then when I did my videos, that's ridiculous. And, but why though, FOMO? They were 10, 12, 15,000, 20,000. LG G2, the, yeah, 20, yeah. 25,000, 30,000. So that gets into my conversation with OLED. OLED was hated because of burn-in first and foremost, but like mm -hmm. plasma before it, because anything ultra expensive is going to create that hate. Same with these large TVs, but now that they're two grand or 3000, they cost as much as your phone. Now everyone's like, Hey, wait a second. And I think that's ironic because now OLEDs, as you're mentioning, can't get that much cheaper. They're kind of stuck because they are expensive to make. There's a high yes. failure rate. Um, they're not efficient. And then here we are realizing that these other TVs, the size is so important, but now we have size and quality. And as you illustrated, mm -hmm. Hisense and TCL are right oh, there. Brian, have... can, can I add one more element? Sure. Size, quality, and then the realization that you don't have to sit 10 feet, 12 feet away. Suddenly, yeah, wait, I could sit eight yeah. feet away and it's, <clears throat> and then they sit eight feet away like we did. Wow, <laughs> this works. Eight feet is, away from a 98 inch TV. I, I can fit this in my house. But isn't that funny? Because I remember when Robert and I were in the store, and even you and I were talking, that seven feet was like the optimal seating distance for 77 or 83. Everyone's like, you're crazy. But the funny thing is, people that were saying that had 65 inch TVs and they were 11 feet away. Once they sat in front of it, they said, wait a second. But you and I, even seeing that TCL booth with your video shows, is getting close. You're realizing, like the TV behind me, guys, is 83 inches. Oh, it looks and tiny. It's like yeah, an iPad. Yeah. <laughs> so what's interesting is OLEDs are now 80 plus inches. But what was so fascinating for me was that I'm getting ahead of myself. Once 77 inch OLEDs were affordable, they were 15,000 mm -hmm. when the C7 was out. When they became affordable, all of a sudden LEDs were inferior because the 75 inch was actually smaller. Because before and, that, and, and were, at the time, we have to remind ourselves they were not cheap. These no. early mini LED TVs were three, four, five thousand dollars, about the same price oh, yeah. as a seventy-seven inch old. And you're like, okay, you know what? Yeah. For that much, and, and, it's and now it's like, okay, the price on, and this is why I'm very disappointed in OLED's pricing roadmap. What we're seeing, mini yeah. LED LCD TVs continue to drop in price every year. Whereas OLED, not doing that. No, but, but to your point, when we recommend to people, we would always hear, you know, hey, FOMO, I'm looking at a 65-inch C8 or a 75-inch whatever. When it went the other way and it was, hey, I'm looking at a 77-inch C1 versus a 75-inch X95K, mm -hmm. the X95K had no shot. It didn't matter if the C1 was $1,000 more expensive. It was larger. Then 83 has the same problem, but it's smaller. But to say to somebody, you have to go from 75 all the way to 85 was a bridge too far. It was too much money. So LEDs for a while, their 75 was this terrible size because OLEDs mm -hmm. were hanging over it. Now mm -hmm. the 83 is the wimp in the class. Mm -hmm. It's the one that's not big enough because now you have 85 inch QM8 that costs the same as a 65 inch G3, which we saw at M-Wave. Remember, we had people walk in and literally say, I like this one. What is this? It's this. Well, the, for the price of this one, I can get an 85 inch. Take that same illustration and now go 100 inches mm -hmm. where OLEDs can't go. The mm -hmm. Z series is probably 30 something thousand dollars, which is still my favorite TV. Um, but Not, 97 inch G4 this year, $26,000. Yeah. So, but do you look at it, FOMO, and say, Kind of like projectors. With projectors, everybody's like, I wish I could have a 200 inch screen. But I think the intimidation of the screen, setting up a projector, bright room, people will get into that and say, wow, it's just too much money. Now that they're obtainable, the size is obtainable. I think the home theater geek is really coming out. Like we we're saying, wait, I could have a hundred inch. Then you have that fantasy of I can game on this, the immersion. And FOMO, the mini LED local dimming is better than ever. But even if it's not, with that immersion, does it really matter to you? Do you think blooming is that big a deal when we're looking at something that is, the sweet spot is the whole screen now. So viewing right. angle is not important. So when you're right. looking at this quality now, are you seeing not just better TVs, but are you recommending because the picture quality doesn't have to be that much better because it's so big? For what I would call it quality of life, ownership experience, right? 
So this is an example that I'm using. We are installing a 98-inch Sony X90L. Thank you, Robert Zone, mm -hmm. Value Electronics, for yep. making that available to us. The at my friend's house. So they asked me originally two years ago when I was helping him design his home theater, it was going to be an ultra short throw projector. But I remember, his, I remember. Yeah, yeah, right. And so I was okay. It's going to be this projector, that, and then the 98 inch TV started coming out. And then Sony released the relatively more affordable X90L 98 inch. And you know we're all football fans. We watch football, college football, and this room has floor to ceiling screen doors all the way along the wall where the tv is and so to the side of the tv is oceanfront beach view mm -hmm. they're not going to try to close that curtain unless they watch tv and i said okay if we have the ultra short throw when you watch you're really going to have to dim those curtains and yeah. lose the view they don't have to lose the view anymore yeah now we can have everything we got the home theater set up right we, yeah. we have the, the sony avr we have surround sound and the windows are open and as soon as that's finished i'm going to do a tour so you guys can see what it ends up looking like but i was like this is it this is the solution i've been waiting for and and you know these they're well off right they could have whatever and when i'm helping them design i'm like look you have a beautiful view why are we installing <clears throat> curtains to block this view when i can get you a tv the, and, and they're about 10 feet away, 98 inch, perfect. I sure we go with a larger 120 inch screen, but so much trouble. And yeah. that's them, right? Many people are in that situation where like, oh, I, I, have, I don't have to turn off the lights anymore. I go, no, turn off the lights, turn it on, doesn't matter. Yeah. And they're coming from a worse TV, right? Uh, Pioneer Plasma from way back when that was their TV and it finally well, died. It's only when so. the coach Kiro Elite, everyone's like, that's not the best TV ever made. <laughs> It is the best TV ever made. <laughs> it was like what, 60 inch or something like that. And they finally, yeah, yeah. you know, right, 20 grand. Getting up yeah, yeah. Big, right? And now they're at a 98 inch. Yeah. And it's exciting for them because, wow, it's a big TV. And, you know, we yeah. can come over and we watch football. But this is how I see most people because they are not knit nerds. But size, you don't have to talk about knits. You can say, this is 98 inches. They break out the ruler. Oh my gosh, that's huge. But yeah. you say, 1,000 nits, 3,000 nits. What do they break out? They, 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 there's no context. Yeah. I could say a million nits and would have no meaning to them. But if you yeah. say 100 inch, they know exactly what that means. I'll say, oh yeah, it's from here to here. And you know, you're yeah. sitting this far. I'm like, oh wow, that's a TV? So and you, already you they're happy. But you illustrate an interesting point as well as practicality. So again, a very wealthy person would almost 100% of the time go projector because again, mm -hmm. it's a it's a, a home theater room. They build it, you know. Robert and those guys build them all the time. We see our home theater tours, and I love that. But to your point, that is typically in a dark environment. But then you're dealing with maybe having somebody. We know how to use projectors. We know keystones. We get that. The average person does not want that. They don't, they don't want to have that. to. So this isn't a projector conversation, but I want to touch on it quick. The simplicity of a TV. And just turn it on and watch it. But then what they're buying an X94 in comparison to a JVC NZ9 or a high-end Sony projector and a screen is actually a bargain. And it's simple. The kids can turn it on. Here's the remote, maybe the receiver. And plus the Sony's in the ecosystem, so they're good to go. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a Sony AVR, Sony TV. Everything's going to be connected, and it's going to be so easy to use. Now, we talk about numbers, and that's what I think caught us off guard. It wasn't just going into this year. This year, we assumed, I assumed last year, we knew these big TVs were coming. It's not a secret. We know what's coming. I was just caught off guard by the popularity because for years, yes. I've been the size guy. So mm -hmm. I was always the voice of reason the other way. Got to go bigger. I had that thing, like the fighting uh, comment is a big, decent fighter beats a better fighter, right? Size, good size. has to be good, though. Then all of a sudden, I watch our community start to change their stance. OLEDs became affordable. For a minute, it was all about OLED. That's all they wanted to talk about. QD mm -hmm. OLED, MLA, that was just a, six months ago. It wasn't six years ago. Mm -hmm. And we saw the UX at 85 inches hold its own against the X95. We saw all these different mini LEDs, but they're kind of converging to the same place, FOMO, where they can only get so good. But at the same time, OLEDs were hitting a ceiling too. Mm -hmm. So we thought this year all we were going to see is refinement. That was it. No big changes. Yeah. yeah. Instead at CES, we saw massive changes to Samsung's 900D. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We saw them talk about their processing. Sony's X, what's it, uh, the prototype? What do we call it now? What's it, the actual not the X90? XR, XR90. XR90. That is the big news. OLEDs have been pushed aside. We have the rumor that there may not be a Sony OLED this year of any kind. And you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, there's not going to be a WRGB OLED? So that video you did was somewhat Sony killed OLED. What was that a video? I'll put, I'll put the uh, thumbnail. Sony up. ends Sony ends OLED. Sony ends OLED. Great I mean, video. I mean, they're they're continuing to sell the A ninety five L if you could find yeah. it somewhere. Like the seventy seven yeah. inch is still a unicorn, and the rumor is the XR eighty may be QD OLED only, not yeah. W OLED. There may have behind no me room. is the A eighty L might be the last. That, thing. that could be the last W OLED generation for Sony because yeah. they have to clean up their lineup. You know why have two yeah. technologies if they cost the same, right? Yeah. And but this is OLED struggling with a market. You mentioned something about is it good enough, and I think this applies to Mini LED as well. Yesterday during our stream, one of our viewers bought the one hundred inch U eight K, loved yep. it. And then he thought, you know what? Let me try the 100 inch U76N at $2,000, about $1,000 less. He says, I love this too. I'm not going to spend more on the UAK. So he dropped the price by 1,000, still kept the 100 inch. He says, I am thrilled. I watch streaming, Netflix, whatever. I'm not a cinema purist. It's so good. I'm not even going to upgrade to the Mini LED. I'll just stick with the U76N. <laughs> like, that, wow. What's amazing about that is, I, and back to projectors, I have a $500 Optoma, throwaway mm-hmm. Optoma 3D. It's one of my favorite things. You know why? It's 500 bucks. But I think when you get something that you like so much that is affordable, mm-hmm. it only feel, the FOMO part of, or the, I should say the buyer's remorse doesn't exist. It only mm-hmm. impresses you every time you turn it on. So if you buy a 100-inch X92 and it's $15,000, it's going to hurt you every second. You're like, damn, I think it was 15 grand. <laughs> I like it. Or the Q190A. And then when we, well, I, I could have bought a Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Well, the 900B, I think, was how much at, at, at uh, 98? The 900B was 30 grand or something, right? Wasn't the AK? Oh, yeah. No, right right now, there's a, the 900C is 30 grand. The 30 AK grand. 100 inch or 98 inch 100C. It's on sale right now. Yeah. It's 30 grand. So, yeah. So, what do we always say? Is that TV you know, 30 times better than this UA, UAK. So I think the surprise of, hey, this is pretty good. I like this. Um, I think, and then that comes to an interesting point too, FOMO, is that those of us that are purists, um, I'll stay with OLED because I do love the picture quality. Um, the micro contrast is important to me, especially during gaming. Even though I'm in a bright room, the A80L still looks amazing this far away. It's not a mirror right now. Um, however, it can't get larger. You are so, capped. Let, let me stop you there. I know full well you're going to have a 98 or 100 inch TV in for review. It's going to be right there behind your 83 inch. And you know what's going to happen? It's not even going to fit behind you. You're going to have to reposition your camera. And I want to see in context how much bigger it is compared to the 83 inch. Because I'm going to have, know, I, yeah, I'm going to have, it's going to be interesting. All behind me. I'm going to have yes, every, it's going to be I a wall to behind me because we, and that's uh, again, quickly, what's exciting about what we're seeing, what we have access to is kind of creating this conversation because I assumed it would be OLED, 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 OLED. And I was actually a little bored by that, even though we're blown away by what we saw. <laughs> I mean, we're blown away by what we saw from Samsung display, from um, the S95D, even the matte finish that I don't love is interesting. The G4, I think, is going to be the TV of the year. And everyone's like, cool. I don't care about that. Tell me about this $2,000. Yeah. And, and, and I'm trying to tell. Now, I, here's the ironic part. For those of you that know me, I'm talking our people off the ledge. And they're like, and FOMO was the size guy. Now, all of a sudden, someone's like, hey, I'm looking for a gaming monitor, a 42-inch QD OLED. You're like, cool. How about a 100-inch? You <laughs> okay? <laughs> Put it in your basket. But the funny thing is, I think, finally, the home theater aspect people feel it's within reach and it's affordable mm-hmm. you, you know i i know the hisense and tcl are watching our, our videos and i want to pause here to tell tcl and hisense this stop investing any more money on brightness and dimming zones stop all of that focus only on two things now motion processing image processing the, the processing chip the software yeah. and color accuracy 
If you're going to spend $100 or 1000 or a million, just don't focus on the hardware anymore. Focus on fine-tuning that hardware to be more like Sony out of the box. Trust me when I say, the minute you get it out of the box looking like an LG C4, G4, A95L, out of the box, X90L, it's over. It's because the yeah. only complaint that I ever get, or I say, you know what, the motion might be this or that, or maybe the skin yep. tones, you might have to have a cal no more. Now, I just say, look, it's $2,000. I don't know why you want 4,000 nits. It's $2,000. And people will accept that. Oh, yeah, I don't need 4,000 nits. That's an easy sell for all of us to convince viewers. 4,000 nits is the domain of the purist. He wants to see that 4,000, that handful of 4,000 nit content that's coming over the next three or four years. But in the meantime, this $2,000 high sensor TCL almost color accurate out of the box filmmaker mode is great motion is fine gaming features yep it, gaming features work you put on a switch I, yep. I i saw the s5 on a switch i'm like this looks phenomenal i have no yeah. complaints at all yeah. for basic console gaming pc gamers obviously you have your needs and you know we won't go there but for the console gamer ps5 xbox where you don't really care about all the boxes being checked you just want it to work well yeah. I think this next generation of 100-inch TVs, as long as TCL and Hisense don't make the mistake that I think OLED is making, which is constantly forcing these improvements, but it costs money, but then that wow. sustain the high prices. Stop it. Just well, focus yeah. on the software improvements, and well, I think well, to, these TVs will be amazing. Well, and to your point, FOMO, if you look at, say, the 83-inch G4, which I think is going to be the TV of the year, we predicted mm -hmm. $6,000. Okay, let's just say that it is. We saw the prices for it. I want that TV. I think it's going to be amazing. However, when you look at what TCL and Hisense, without even knowing it, mm -hmm. are steering into the future of content with Sony with the reference monitor at 4,000 nits, they're already covered. Mm -hmm. So now you're going where OLEDs actually can't go, at least this, this next year, maybe in 2025. So now... You do have that. Well, maybe I do want those nits again. You didn't want those a couple of years ago. So it was just a waste. It was just washed out. <laughs> right, now right, you're thinking, right. okay, I want that. But you're speaking also what you said about console gaming. I was thinking about like your friend with the X90. It's like a home theater. They have a, they have a couple consoles built into it. They play when mm -hmm. they want. Mm -hmm. your, your PC purist, a real PC gamer, um, is probably still on a monitor too because they're at a Absolutely. desktop and the response time is unbelievable. And... I've never really done a lot of that, but it is pretty amazing. There's mm -hmm. still a very small percentage that are PC gaming on TVs that way. Mm -hmm. So you're still catering to that group. And that group, and even that big TV does 144 hertz. So you have it covered. But as you mentioned, good enough. And FOMO, who really buys is not the purists. The enthusiasts in audio video, we're the ones that are procrastinators. We hang back. They don't make money off of us. So placating us or, or playing to our strengths doesn't help us. So this big TV number is actually to the average consumer that says, I want big, I want affordable, and it's yeah. good enough. So where does OLED go from here? Because it is a fall FOMO. There really is. You can't charge less. I know we want that to be the case. They need to make money. So um, we see uh, Samsung Display amazing technology, but they're also focused on reference monitors themselves, tablets, monitors. Where do OLED technology go? Can it can just get cheaper or what can it do other than get cheaper? Okay. Than it can OLED technology getting better will do nothing for them because, okay, if you have a spectrum, a line, right? Where on the one end, you have the best, most amazing TV technology possible for a price. And, and we're gonna not mention micro LED because that's like 100,000. But let's say we take OLED to its ultimate conclusion. Let's say, for the sake of argument, I have an OLED TV, 4,500 nits, no burn-in at all, and everything is perfect, right? Perfect out of the box, everything. Let's just say if it was at a shootout, it will win every shootout for the next five years. Okay, mm -hmm. but that TV is $6,000 for a 77, 83 inch, I don't care. Even at that level of performance, how many of those can you sell? Because if you take it to its ultimate conclusion, the, the, the number of people that can buy that TV is so small, it does not support a company.
And then as you drift down the other way, let's say they have a A4, right? The A series from LG is the most affordable OLED. It's 60 hertz, whatever. But the consumer who buys a 60 hertz TV, they don't care. They don't care how many hertz it is, as long as the motion is fine. And between you and me, for watching streaming, 60 hertz is fine. Processing is so good that it will convert 60, convert 24p, whatever, 30, 60 to 60, it will look fine. Maybe not for gaming, but for everyone else is fine. All that's missing is a little bit of brightness, right? Maybe an SDR. So the B series, if they can make the B series, which I think is bright enough for most people, get that B series down to A series pricing. So $1,500 for a 77 inch. That is the target they have to get there. If they can get OLED to 77 inches, 15, 1600, most of the year, they don't have to wait for a special liquidation sale on Black Friday or whatever. Unless they get there, it's gonna be really a hard sell because when people come to me and they say, look, I'm just gonna stream this and that, I'll play Nintendo Switch every now and then. Why would I ever recommend them an OLED? Well, I hear streaming, I hear all of that. Like, well, FOMO, why am I paying late. a premium? But is it too is late? It? Because to, to your point, 65 inches was the was the new big size. Yes. And then I think we thought it would go 77, 85. People are going in our com our community streams from 55 inches to 100. <laughs> yeah, that's, in the USA. Well, yes. well and the, yeah, in the US, I must, I must delineate that. But if you think about what you're saying, people would always say, well, again, the seating distance fiasco. Now people mm -hmm. understand that's not a big deal. And you said this yep. the other day. Everyone has space for TV that big. If you have a wall, there it is. And now some of these TVs have narrow stands. So people mm -hmm. are saying, wait, you know what? Now that it's affordable, they're actually entertaining it. Yeah. And they're not as nit nerd based. And here's the thing what I think of what TCL and Hisense are both doing. Hisense UX is their high end flagship. Mm -hmm. They're going to have an AK, which won't be here yet. But they have their highest end, 10,000 nits, and then they have the UAK successor, uh, the U89, uh, U. Eight uh, N, A N, uh, which is still going to be at least two thousand nits, or yeah. maybe even so. Three, that'll right? two so to that'll three thousand nits. Yeah, that'll be their flagship. They'll have a big version of that. TCL will have four or five large versions of their TVs, mm -hmm. um, and then their M8, QM8 uh, one fifteen Max will be maybe fifteen thousand. That's massive. So they'll have everybody covered. OLED is going to be stuck at eighty three, which is way too small, and even the eighty eight Z three is too small. I just never thought that we'd already be here from just last year where 83 is too That's small. Fast. 85 yeah. is too small. Yeah. So I think if you're an industry insider that is trying to predict what's going to happen, I would have screwed it up. Because well, I'll, I'll I really... tell you right now, we are not industry insiders, by the way. We, we read the tea leaves based on leaks and rumors. And so the most recent leak rumor is that the Sony xr80 so the xr70 xr90 are lcd tvs xr80 mm -hmm. has now been leaked to be 55 65 and 77 clearly 77 makes it an oled yep. but not having an 83 not having anything smaller limiting it to only three sizes the conclusion is oh it's got to be qd oled right why would sony give up on the 83 inch and they're already selling the a80l which is an 83 inch they'll just sell that through so if this ends up being QD OLED only year for Sony. Will Sony ever go back to WRGB? They will if LG Display lowers their prices. Because yeah. that's their source. If LG Display says, Sony, we cannot lose you as uh, a client. We're going to give you a great deal next year. And so, okay, then we'll bring it back. But if LG Display is like, oh, this is our best. I'm sorry. And Samsung Display is like, you know what? We're going to sell it to you at break even. We don't need to make money on it. We're going to make money on cell phones. Yeah. Well, That's and for you and I, for you and I, again, we're saying that hearing from insiders, what we think is selling well isn't always the case. Right. We think that QD OLEDs are killing it because I think it's oh, a great yeah. technology. They're selling yeah. out. The S90 is gone. That's actually true that they're gone, but they didn't make money. Um, it's almost like the game Alan Wake is the best selling game for, I think, Remedy, and they haven't made a profit yet. So we think in the industry, hey, they're killing it. They're selling these. The reality is the money maker is the frame mm -hmm. or the cu 7000 is the money maker 
So that's where I think we get it twisted and think, oh, look, QD OLED is, is cannibalizing the micro L or the mini LED Samsung lineup. Mm. They're investing in their 8K mini LED, and that's where their resources are going. So actually, I thought it was going to continue down that path, and it's not. And now the fact that the numbers show size. Size is cannibalizing. Are, they're OLED, dead. Yeah. There's nowhere to go. Yeah, you can't, no, I agree. You can't, it, you can, like you said, you can go 5,000 nits FOMO. This is where they're really hurting. I'm, and I'll, I'll say it this way. If the G4 or those TVs, and I love them, if they go 5,000 nits, it won't matter because nope. a cheaper LED will be 5,000 nits and it'll be 100 inches. It'll be $2,000. <laughs> if that's you, if that's, and that's <laughs> so, the painful can truth. And, and, okay, and I think Classy says it best for the cinematic purist, you got to go with OLED how many of them out there are out there right no. like when they yeah. when they come to me and they say i watch news and streaming that's not a cinematic purist he doesn't even have a 4k disc player i mean he's like no. oh whatever I'll, yeah. I'll deal with hulu right they just want something that's like bang for the buck right that's what they're saying here's my budget i need an 85 inch tv well the minute i hear 85 83 i look at the budget we're like that you know what all I have are LCD TVs for you, my friend, because right now the cheapest 83 inch OLED, and I'll tell you this, since we're still talking about mini LED, I am convinced that Samsung is running an experiment. They are selling their 83 inch OLED, right? They're not calling it W OLED. They're not calling it QD. They're just saying, this is our General OLED technology. technology it's yep. 83 inches. It's an S90C, and we're going to sell it for under $3,000. And they're going to watch because you can get it for under $3,000 at Samsung.com. And, and I have a lot of viewers who got it for 2450, 2500, 2650, right? And they're saying, if I can't sell an 83 inch OLED for under 3000, we will not force Samsung display to make a QD OLED 83 inch because it's not gonna be under $3,000. You see the problem? If they cannot get people to buy a dirt cheap, and I say dirt cheap for $2,500, my friends, an 83 inch OLED is dirt cheap. If they can't sell that through by the end of this year, they're like, what's the point of making QD OLED? No one's buying it at that price. And that's $2,500, yeah. right? And people are saying, well, $2,500, I can, I can save hundred bucks and get a 98 inch S5. Yeah, well, not only that, 83 inch A90J, $8,000. Yep, that's, that was what it was. $8,000. So you're saying to yourself, if somebody tried to release an OLED right now at eight grand, they did, there would be a fire. <laughs> so that shows you how is the company going to make money? Yeah. If, if they can't even sell a $2,500 83 inch, like, pfft, yeah, forget that. I just, but I did a video five years ago saying is LED dead. And even though I've been pushing it for behind the scenes, I was like, there's no way. And then They're we saw back. that. They're back, but they're back, and I, I just don't see how they win. I don't see how OLED can make it for the, a price. I can't see uh, even the size structure of, a, of an, L, an OLED that big is, mm -hmm. is hard because they're delicate in comparison to an LED. Right. Um, now, now let, let, let me give it some balance. We're going to have viewers are like, oh, but OLED's the best. You guys are willing to pay the premium. Yeah. We're not talking about you guys, right? We're talking about how does OLED spread to the rest of the consumer marketplace, meaning people who are ready to spend $2,000. That was OLED's target market, the $2,000 consumer buying a 65-inch OLED TV. Oh, yeah, $1,800, right? Whatever the C3 is right now, I think C3 is $1,500. You're capturing that $1,500, $2,000 consumer, and at that size, OLED, this is the year for OLED to shine because consumers have that money. But instead, they're like, wait, you mean I can get an 85-inch for $1,400? Yeah. And then they look at it at Best Buy. There's an 85-inch somewhere over there. Like, the first thing they see is, oh, my God, it's 20 inches larger. This is awesome. Yeah. Not 10 yeah. inches, 20 inches because a QM8 is under $2,000. Uh, yeah. The U8K is sold out, right? The Hisense U8K 85-inch, all gone. And yeah. consumers are seeing this like, huh, well, I mean, it's the same price, 85 inch mini LED. It looks close enough. Yeah, I, I see the infinite contrast, but that 20 inches, 
10 inches, I have a hard time convincing. 20 yeah. inches, that's yeah. the price of a mini LED TV now. And, and well, the QN90C yeah. is 1900 at Samsung.com. That's, so, a, and that's your, a premium flagship. And, well, and to your point, and uh, we'll get out after this, the Sony kiosk for the last number of years and Best Buy, the pad they call it, their 800 series is below their X90 is this 800 or 80K. It was always there at 85 inches. It's just massive. And above it is always the leading OLED. And right now it's an A80L at 55 inches or 65 is below, above that TV. And when I'm filming, I go down to the price and the OLED is double the price. Double. I think the cons that's on purpose. The consumer looks up and goes, give me this big, this big one. There's nobody other than an enthusiast. <laughs> it's that lost leader, right? <laughs> so he puts it out there. No one's going to buy it. It's okay. But instead yeah. of being a cheap lost leader, it's so it's priced so high, they're driving them to the higher margin product. That's yeah, bigger, they're basically saying, you know what? Yep. As cool as that is, look at this. Hey, honey, look at There's no way. And that's who's buying no way. these. Yeah. That's who's buying these. And that's why I think this is an interesting conversation. Because like Plasma... And I'll finish on this FOMO. Because like Plasma, even I still cry about Plasma. Plasma is king. The diehard enthusiasts that are in the chat right now. The motion um, is natively great. Yeah, but it's still it's still something everybody loves. A lot of people that watch us still have them. Mm -hmm. But like them, I yeah. feel old. John Hooper, headed. I see you. John Hooper, what's up? Shut up, John <laughs> Hooper. Um, I feel like OLED is there. I feel like in a blink, OLED is now the new plasma, not the successor to plasma, but it's become the new plasma. And the fact that I can't see a future for it, because if you remember real quick, plasmas, as beautiful as they were, the VT, the ZT, the very last generation, were still 65 inches mm -hmm. and they were still very expensive. Mm -hmm. And at that point, LEDs of the, of the era were very bright, they were very cheap, and they were 75 inches. And that was the end of plasma. Here we are now, we're 83. And here's the worst part, FOMO, is the G4 is the only 83 this year that is pushing the envelope. I felt like last year, if they had MLA at 83 and there was QD OLEDs at 83, we might have been able to hold off LED. Okay. I think it's too late. I think the G4 is gonna be amazing at 83, but I think without QD OLED at that size, people are gonna skip right over that and go right to these massive TVs. I think so, and here's the thing, Samsung Electronics and Sony and now LG, they all carry similarly priced LCD TVs at the larger size. Yeah. And I think partly as an experiment to see if they can capture that size to price ratio. Now, although the QNED 89T at $69.99 launch is a bit expensive, I expect it to be under 5000 by Prime Day, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and even further discounts by Black Friday, if that TV ends up selling well, they're going to make more money margin per unit on that TV than on an 83-inch MLA, which right now is less expensive, but I think they're doing that. <laughs> the reality is it is that the 98-inch QNED 89T is not a more expensive TV in terms of parts and everything. It will end up proving to be a cheaper TV by the end of the year. And that's what's going to kill them. They're going to notice, wow, people are buying up our 98 inch. We're outselling the OLED MLA 83 inch with this yeah. 98 inch. The minute that happens, I think it's going to be the end of large OLED TVs because it's really hard to justify carrying something that so few people, it's like 8K, right? What, what do we predict? 8K TVs are so expensive and there's no 8K content, eventually they'll die out. And they did. The only company still supporting 8K is Samsung. But yeah. what was the, the people saying? Oh, you know, there's no 8K content. You can't see a difference. Well, here yeah. we are again. Oh, there's no content when you need 3,000 nits for an OLED. You can't see the difference. Yeah, oh. true. I mean, these new mini LEDs, they are, I mean, it's the, the blacks are crushed, yes but you get perfect blacks. The specular highlights are somewhat missing. We, we see it all the time, but the average consumer doesn't care. Now, no. those watching us do care. That's why they get the OLED. But everyone else, ah, eh, so yeah, the star's a little bit dim, whatever, I'm saving $4,000. At the end of the day, how do we argue with that? I'm saving $4,000. See, this is why, and uh, we have to finish with this, but this is why I thought LEDs were dead. 
when I saw the Q900C last year, pre, pre-firmware update, in fairness, you and I had it side by side with the S95C. Oh, wow. It was so far apart that I didn't bother filming it. It's on your stream, <laughs> but I didn't bother filming it because the 900C didn't have its update yet. But I was like, wow, why would I recommend this TV? Mm-hmm. And I, in the end, the 900C actually has improved. But the fact is, I'm like, there's no way. The, the, S, the S95C was actually brighter. It, it wasn't was? even perceptionally brighter. It was brighter. Then I had the X95 go against the A95L. And I was like, wow, the A95L looked brighter in a lot of scenes. The X95's goal was not to be super bright. I thought that they were kind of meeting in the middle. So I assumed they were all doomed. They were done chasing brightness. And then a year later, nope, brightness is back on the menu. And local dimming is better. Oh, and by the way, we're cheaper. So that's the, the chemistry. Or I'm sorry, the the the... Uh, recipe for the disaster is mm-hmm. now we are pulling back to brighter for a while there FOMO the LEDs were getting less bright that's why I thought that mm-hmm. they were doomed they were less bright yeah. they weren't getting that big 85 inches but now as you're saying they're brighter they look better the processing is getting better they're cheaper mm-hmm. and out of nowhere there's more options so I think OLED is not just the successor to plasma Unfortunately, I think it's going to follow the same fate, even though I love it. I'll continue to support it. I don't think there's a way out of it. Uh, and a constant reminder to viewers watching and they're up in arms. We're looking at the microeconomic trends. We're not talking about, is it worth more money? It's worth it if you have the money. But macroeconomically, the trends, the sales trends globally of OLED TVs have been in decline and stagnant the last two years. It's no longer expanding its market share. And badly, but and badly. Badly, right. But the other way, mini LEDs are growing in market share. And 98-inch TVs are growing in market share. 10 times? And, Did you say 10 times? Yeah, 10 times. The large TV That's size, right. LCD TVs, just generally LCD TVs, growing 10 times. And I can see it. I mean... <laughs> $2,000 for the S5 and the U76N, and that's this year. Next year, we're going to see more, and we're going to see more TV brands jump into this bandwagon of cheaper 98-inch. Like, what, what did you and I say? Samsung Crystal Series, amazing TV for most people. Get it at Costco. It's under $1,000. Call it a day. Yeah. One of my and favorite TVs is, is the 85-inch CU7000, 800 bucks. Yeah. 800 yeah. bucks all day long. Sam's, that and, and that's why they're right better. in front. Yeah. Better than any right TCL. Mm-hmm. So what's funny is my argument, just to be a realist before we say goodbye, um, is that screen uniformity is still an issue for every TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At larger sizes, it's more of an issue. A larger size, that little dot that you see on dirty screen is a basketball. Uh, it is local. a little bit softer. <laughs> if, you're sitting, if you're sitting seven feet, softer. eight feet away, from a 98 inch, it's bigger, but yes, it, you'll see it's that it's softer. a little bit softer. Yeah. Now, my biggest thing, which actually is going to be proven wrong at this moment, is that it's your forever TV, simply because of how massive it is. Uh, you're stuck with it forever. Here's the problem. Uh, it, it takes away my argument. At $2,000, who cares? Mm-hmm. If in three mm-hmm. years you want another TV, that TV was only two grand. If you want to donate it, I'm not, th- I'm not minimizing the price of it. But why it was a problem for me before is those TVs were fifteen thousand. Mm-hmm. But anybody will buy a TV for two grand for a couple of years and say, you know, I'm done with it. I'll give it. I'll donate it to a school. Mm-hmm. But it's not your forever TV anymore. And that's where. Yeah. Um, and 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 for you guys watching, why we know this trend is huge is we're being offered review samples of larger TVs that never happened before. TVs were always reviewable at sixty five inches. People didn't want to send them out. So for reviewers this year, all over this platform, they're going to be reviewing massive TVs. What does that tell you? Oh, I have to redo my entire wall now to fit these 90-inch TVs yeah. because you, you got to go with the trend. Last year, so many of you asked, hey, FOMO, are you going to review this 100-inch, 98-inch? You know, it won't fit. Well, guess what, folks? I have to install yeah. an all-new wall mount. These TVs yeah. are all over 125 pounds. My wall mount is just barely 125. I got to get these Sanus mounts that's up to 150 pounds, up to 100 inches. I mean, I got to redo my entire wall mount system so I could hold at least one of those TVs and maybe two. So, yeah, it's going <laughs> to... 
I mean, and they're going to do 98 inch TV reviews, honestly. Well, well, and the fact that they're willing to send them out, they're paying for that shipping shows you that's what they want to sell. Mm -hmm. I never thought we'd see this. And a lot of reviewers are going to struggle because you actually have to have the space for something like that. But it shows yeah. you what their goals are and where they're headed and people are buying them. All right, FOMO, as always, this is a long, long video, but I appreciate it. Um, I think we both agree that it's looking pretty bleak for OLED as much as I love it. And I prefer that picture quality. I know we both do. But as you mentioned, the microeconomics make this something that's um, unsurmountable. And it really is something that I think is hard to avoid. Yeah. Get cheaper, LG. I mean, no, don't get brighter because I know you and I, you got to get bright. Okay. You're there. You're there. Last year, we said it. You're there. Stop it. But, you know, they, they, they want to continue getting brighter and more expensive. Yeah. Can't do that. And I want and I want them to. I love them. I want them to continue getting brighter. But as your point, what you want is not what makes money. And that's why yeah. we think like the matte screen will do well. But I was clearly wrong about the future of TV technology. I was dead wrong. I thought LEDs were going to peter out this year, especially. And seeing this renewed love, we all thought that, you know, I, look, they all have an OLED. Hisense has an OLED, yeah. TCL has an OLED. They all have OLEDs. And the fact that they're like, nah, keep it in the back. Here are the LEDs. I'm happy because I always love them, but I just really thought I was alone on that. And apparently, no, nope, everybody loves them. We're going to have, right, have well, a 90 inch, 90 inch TV shootout at some point. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> have it at a football field. <laughs> all right, brother. Thank right. you so much for joining thank me. Thank you. Check out Stop the FOMO. You know, my man. I'll talk to you, bro. Bye. It's better by now.